Science Labs, Inc. Trades on the NASDAQ under the symbol GOVX. It's a clinical stage biotech company developing novel vaccines for many of the world's most threatening infectious diseases and therapies for solid tumor cancers. Happy to welcome Chairman, President, and CEO David Dodd. Welcome to the conference and welcome back, David. Thank you. It's good to be here. I appreciate the opportunity. Now, I'm sure most investors and potential investors, they're interested in you addressing this morning's press release regarding the HHS BARDA stop work order related to your project, NextGen Clinical Trials. So I know you're going to address that. The floor is yours. Thank you. And I appreciate everyone's interest in this. Uh, clearly, uh, today we issued a press release early this morning when the market uh, before the market opened about the stop work order that uh, people have raised a lot of questions about. So I wanted to be able to address that. I want to uh, go through a couple of points. It's our website. I'll guide people. Our website, www.geovax.com, uh, has a, a formal statement of which I'll be, uh, be utilizing during this discussion. And then hopefully if there's time, we'll take questions. But I think this is very important because a lot of people have been interested on the continued progress we've been making relative to this. So indeed, um, on Monday of this week, we disclosed that late last Friday, we'd received written notification from, uh, on behalf of HHS and BARDA, that was a stop work order regarding our, our project next gen phase 2B trial, which was scheduled to start its uh, patient enrollment uh, in, in vaccination in the fourth quarter of this year. Uh, we received that notice. We had no prior indication that the notice was forthcoming. We were surprised by the notice as both ourselves and our external contractors and consultants were making good progress and had a, a seemingly productive working relationship with the technical team at BARDA. The notice invoked the termination for the convenience of the government provision of the project agreement. Although not referenced in the notice, nor in any separate communications with the government parties, we're, we assume from what we can determine that the contract termination is resulting from the ongoing government efficiency efforts under the new administration. The termination in no way implies any concerns as to the safety or potential efficacy of GEO CMO4S1, our next generation COVID-19 vaccine, or the underlying MVA or modified vaccinia anchor vaccine platform or technology. Nor does the termination impact the ongoing clinical trials of G GEO CMO4S1, primarily those investigating the vaccine in immunocompromised patient populations. They will continue unaffected. The BARDA funding pursuant to the project agreement was mostly earmarked for incremental spending with a large portion going directly to the external clinical research organization or CRO to conduct the clinical trial. Given the structure of the award, the financial impact to GEOVAX is estimated at less than $750,000 annually toward the reimbursement of existing personnel and overhead costs. GEOVAX, therefore, we do not anticipate any significant changes to our ongoing operations resulting from the contract termination. The decision by BARDA to terminate our contract is most disappointing to GEOVAX and our stakeholders. But it's important to understand that our Project NextGen award was never a dependency. It was a validation of the multi-antigenic approach afforded by our MVA vaccine technology. We remain committed to GEO CMO Forest One as a critically needed next generation COVID-19 vaccine, providing the potential of A, a more robust immune response against emerging variants. Secondly, improved durability versus the first generation COVID-19 vaccines. And lastly, especially in addressing the immune protection among those patients with compromised immune systems. Our current studies will continue, especially our focus on achieving the completion of the investigator-initiated phase two trial among chronic lymphocytic leukemia or CLL patients, one of the highest risk groups in need of reducing the risk of severe infection, hospitalization, and the risk of death. 
demonstrating the potential superior value of GOCMO4S1 among immunocompromised patients remains our focus for the development of differentiation from the first generation and other single antigen focused vaccines. We look forward to providing a more comprehensive update on all of our programs in the coming weeks. I do want to mention that we continue to view that the opportunity for GEO-CMO4-S1 on a global basis, recognizing the 40 plus million adults in the United States and the over 400 million worldwide who have medical conditions that deplete their body's ability to respond to the first generation vaccines, the value of that opportunity, in fact, the medical need is so great that the commercial value potential is estimated at over $30 billion. Our focus for immunocompromised patients, as well as a better booster on top of first generation vaccines is such that we believe we have the opportunity to successfully secure a considerable portion of the opportunity that's out there. Regarding our GOMVA, our vaccine that's in development and currently uh, getting ready to start being vialed, to start, so the fill and finish operation to be able to initiate our critical clinical trial yet this year, that uh, product alone has an opportunity of over $10 billion on a global basis. And our Gadeptin uh, solid tumor therapy and just addressing head and neck cancer for which we are continuing the path towards a phase two study of Gadeptin plus an immune checkpoint inhibitor such as Keytruda in, in addressing first recurrent head and neck cancer, that represents a $15 billion opportunity. Our remaining milestones for, for 2025 will include updates on each of these programs, as well as that of our advanced MVA manufacturing process, which continues underway. With that, Anna, I'll stop it. If you have any questions, I'm happy to address them. All right, perfect. Thank you, David. We do have a few questions. Um, sorry, my thing, <laughs> one second, here we go. All right, so is there a possibility that following the termination of the BARDA agreement, the clinical development priority will shift to pursuing EUA for GOMVA? For GOMVA, uh, we believe we have the opportunity for an expedited pathway uh, that could include um, emergency use licensing, which as you may know, is available through interactions with WHO. And we've been spending quite a bit of time in discussions with WHO, with UNICEF, with CEPI and others. So we're not just concentrating on the US, but we recognize that the need is tremendous within Africa, but continues around the world. So we are looking at all such paths. Thank you for the question. Uh when did you say the start of the 10,000 patient trial will commence and when are the first updates expected? Well, the 10,000 patient phase 2B trial is the BARDA Project NextGen trial, which is the subject that we addressed in the press release this morning. It, we, it, it will, we were given a stop work order to terminate going forward with that. So we were scheduled to start for, in fourth quarter of this year but given the stop work order, our arm, our study will not be started. Can you give an update on Gadeptin? Sure. Gadeptin, as we mentioned last summer, we announced that after a thorough review of the uh, of the data that we've generated, a phase one and a phase one two, we've made the decision. We've uh, hired the CRO. We're finalizing the protocol as well as a, a final, you know, doing the manufacturing of the product. But that will go forward in a phase two trial of, among, uh, of Gadeptin in conjunction with an immune checkpoint inhibitor uh, targeting first recurrent head and neck cancer patients. And we anticipate as that rolls out, we'll give more updates on that, but that's where that's progressing. There will be a presentation at the upcoming AACR American Association of Cancer Research. So that is in the in the week of uh, April the 27th. So in, in a couple of weeks, we'll have a presentation of that at the AACR meeting. And our uh, company oncologist, Dr. Mark Pipus, will be there in various discussions with others there. So we're very excited long-term, especially, but even near-term with the updates that we'll be rolling out 
uh, for Gaddafi and coming soon. And are there any sites in the United States? For which product? It was a general question. Oh, yes. Uh, you know, right now, uh, for our for GEO CMO 4S1, we, we have multiple sites in the United States in the, in the immunocompromised trial of hematologic patients who are being prepped for stem cell transplant or a CAR-T therapy. They're throughout the United States. We're, that trial will also be expanding to include sites in Canada as well as the UK. In the CLL trial, that is, is specifically uh, in, in the United States, uh, two sites in uh, both out of uh, the City of Hope National Medical Center, but both in California. And, All right, and, and I, I was yes. saying, GOMVA, I apologize. The GOMVA, the MPOC site, that will be largely, those sites are anticipated to be in, in Europe as well as in Africa. And last question, must BARDA pay a termination fee and a compensation for work on trials in progress but not finished? Well, first of all, we don't have um, a clinical trial actively underway. Recall it was going to be starting in fourth quarter. But what, uh, what we will be supported with is under the, the existing contract, which is covered also in the stop work order and in the contract that we have with them, is any work that we have underway related to those areas that that have been pre-cleared with BARDA, which we always have gone to, they will be reimbursed. It's a cost reimbursement and those will be occurring. All right, perfect. Well, David, thank you for this update. We will send the rest of these questions to you and your team so you can answer on your own, but we appreciate this and we hope that we see you again real soon. Good, and thank you everyone for your interest. Appreciate it. All right, everyone, this completes day one. We will see you all back here tomorrow morning. We start at 9 a.m. Eastern for day two of our virtual investor conference. We'll see you then. Thanks for watching.